Hey guys, so I'm going to be trying to update with videos like these relatively often, but um, I did sort of part of this uh, in the last video I made, which is sort of like, ignore the cat in the background, but uh, with Nova, and that was a question I get a lot, which is, how is Nova taking it? So then this is sort of a continuation of that, and that's a question I get almost as much, which is uh, from people who are transgender or questioning, asking how they can start the process. Um, which is a pretty big question, and it'll differ depending on where you are. So this is going to be sort of uh, recountants from me and my cat, apparently, about um, the experience I went through, which is going to be different from everyone else's. <sighs> it's going to be different from everyone else's experience, because um, it's already... It's distracting me so bad. Uh, it's all really, really dependent on where you live. Um, just city by city and doctor by doctor, it's going to be a different experience. So don't think that this is what's going to happen in your experience, because this is just what happened in my experience. But hopefully it'll be helpful. So what a lot of people do initially is they seek out counseling. I didn't do this because this just isn't how I deal with a lot of my personal issues. I don't like talking about them. I barely like to acknowledge they exist. Um, so instead I did a lot of research and that was my first step was going on to Google and typing in transgender, FTM, uh, FTM transition, all that, and just getting as much of the nitty gritty information as I could. I also went on YouTube and looked up transition videos and on people's personal websites and looked up their sort of like documentation of their transition. Um, it was really helpful actually, I found some websites that had like the social side of this transition, the family side, and you know, the physical side. So that was really helpful. Um, you can't just take from one of these resources, you sort of have to explore the spectrum of it, which is, you know, social, medical, um, family, um, career-wise, like you have to explore all the ways in which, a, like, transition impacts your life because it's all going to end up being important. So through researching I kind of allowed myself to deal with my emotions and so by the time I actually sought out a counselor, which is I phoned the Transgender Health Clinic in Vancouver and got an appointment with a counselor there, I'd already pretty much consolidated in my gender identity. There wasn't really anything for me left to work through because I'd been dealing with my this my entire life and the section of time which I did the research and did think about it deeply was just sort of like, it was really for me just, there wasn't anything new, it was just coming to terms with things I had been feeling my entire life and sort of, like the biggest part um, of it for me was sort of like ripping off that, those layers of denial that I was buried underneath and um, sort of realizing the fact that if I sort of kept, um, kept pushing, like rejecting this, rejecting this male identity, that I would continue to just be an inwardly really sad person, which is what I was. And that was affecting the way I thought of myself, and that was affecting the way I thought and treated other people, and dealt with a lot of things. And I'm only really realizing the extent to which it affected me in those ways now. So uh, once I had set up my appointment with the counselor, I went in to see her and uh, after talking for a little bit, she offered to hook me up with uh, a doctor who was at the clinic downstairs because the therapy space was in a building just above it. It's, they're sort of attached in the same building because they're part of the same clinic. So I happily agreed and I was set up with a, uh, a doctor who could do my entire assessment for me and I was lucky in that way. Um, a lot of people have to seek out therapists and doctors um, separately, and a lot of people don't get directed to a doctor who can comprehensively do it to for them, so I was really lucky in that sense. And this is where the Harry Benjamin, yeah, Harry Benjamin standards of care come in, and they're really fascinating if you look it up, especially the history, but I uh, really encourage people to look up those standards of care because um, they are how doctors treat their transsexual patients, their guidelines for it, and doctors will take from it sort of what they they think um, their patients require. So your experience with a doctor will differ in the sense that they might follow the Harry Benjamin standards of care to a T, 
no pun intended, or they might um, follow it very, very, very loosely. But you probably will hear about these standards of care at one point in your transition. So the standards of care outline an assessment process which, is take, which takes a minimum of three months and can take up to about a year. I've heard of it going to two years, but uh, for me it was three months. And it is comprised of a mental assessment, a physical assessment, and blood work. Uh, the mental assessment um, can be done quite formally. I've heard of doctors giving their patients questionnaires to fill in, like personality questionnaires. But the way that my doctor did it is we just sort of talked it out and she wanted to know basically everything about me, like my childhood, um, my adolescence, my family, my friends, my relationship status, mom, my, my, uh, my sexuality, um, and yeah, my, my job status, um, my employment status, I mean, my education, just if I was going to school, where I was going to school, what I was studying, just all these uh, not all these questions even played in the transition. It was just um, knowing more about me and knowing where I was in my life. So for me, it wasn't really anything to be afraid of. Um, but I have heard of it being kind of sketched sometimes. So um, that is something to consider. Because <laughs> sometimes it can be a really, really harsh like mental assessment. As in, like, there's this term that's like, are you a true transsexual? Which isn't something I agree with. Because, I mean, every trans man or trans woman or transgender person I've ever met is different, just as we're all different as human beings. Anyway, moving on. Um, then there's a physical assessment, which is just a normal doctor's physical, and blood work, which is just taking blood, drawing blood, and um, then they test it. And this is, um, for me, I like this went by within two sessions with my doctor, just because I don't have any medical conditions. Um, I've heard of trans guys getting diagnosed, diagnosed with uh, diabetes during this assessment. They just didn't know they had it. So um, that has to be dealt with first before your doctor can prescribe you with testosterone. Uh, you've got to keep in mind that the doctors, I can't say all of them, just because I have heard horror stories, but most doctors, my doctor anyway, wasn't trying to delay my transition with the assessment. Um, it was really necessary for her because she's prescribing me with a, like, a medication. So, of course, she has to make sure that she knows enough about me in order to do that in a safe manner. And in order to do that, um, with the utmost confidence that something won't go really wrong. Um, because it, it's, it, what a lot of people sort of overlook with this is it is medical. Like, you are injecting something into your body that is going to affect you. Um, in very real ways and there are a lot of risks attached to this and so you have to take the proper precautions first and you just have to be aware of what's going on your doctor has to be aware of what's going on with you so that they can sort of orchestrate these things from their uh, position as your overseeing physician I should probably mention that it doesn't have to be a doctor who does your assessment for you uh, it can be a therapist who has the required certification for it um, and then they can just write a letter to a doctor or sort of uh, pass your information along to a doctor who can do the rest of the assessment for you, which is the medical side of it. Um, but yeah, a, a therapist who has the proper credentials can do your assessment for you, your mental assessment. Also, not all doctors will be able to do your assessment for you. Some won't have the training and some won't be comfortable doing it. Um, so if your doctor doesn't have the training or isn't familiar with uh, having a transsexual patient, then you can ask them if they don't have the training to, uh, if they're willing to go through the training to treat you, or if they can direct you to a doctor who can take care of it for you. And that's can that's where it can be a little bit tricky to find a doctor who can do your assessment. But um, there are research resources online that uh, sort of list out some doctors. <clears throat> in certain areas who can do assessments. So that's worth looking into if you're sort of stuck on finding a doctor who can actually do your stuff for you. And uh, finally, on the day that I was prescribed with testosterone, uh, my doctor gave me a sheet that outlined essentially everything testosterone could and did do to you. And there were some things in that sheet that I had never heard of before. Um, so it goes to show that you can never really learn everything like there's always new stuff popping up but and every everyone's experience is different um 
But yeah, I signed all the appropriate paperwork, initialed everything, and then I was given my prescription. I went to go fill it. And then about a week later, I returned to the doctor's office and was shown how to do my shot. And I didn't do my own shot until just recently. And I also wasn't on the same dose all that time. I started at 25 milligrams and did that for about a month. And then I had blood work done and my doctor decided to up my dose. If that was okay with me, I didn't have to up my dose to 50. And then I was on that for a long time. Then recently I have to, to 80 milligrams per week. So, you know, like all that stuff continues even after you're prescribed testosterone. That isn't, that isn't even close to being the end of it. I have the cat ball in my pocket so she can stop playing with it. And now I'm working on the surgical side of that with uh, dealing with MSP and BC, which is even more stuff to take care of and uh, legal name change as well. So it's, it's a lot more than that, but um, that was just sort of the getting started process for me. And uh, I hope that helped people. I know it isn't as comprehensive as it could be, and it might not apply to your situation, but I hope that helped, and I hope that answered uh, those questions at least a little bit. So yeah, bye.